Amen. Amen. Hey, can we all stand for a few moments? Everyone's a little bit quiet today. Can you just turn to your neighbor and say, you ready for church? Give them a shake. Give them a, is it an air high five still? Give them a look. Ask them if they're ready for the word. Come on. Let's just pray before we come. Will everyone stand? God, we just thank you that it's in your presence. We have fullness of joy. Thank you that as we gather together, we can celebrate the, the, the goodness of God in, in people's lives and in our lives, Father. And God, we just pray as we come to your word right now, that you would speak to us, stir our hearts. God, help us to outwalk the, the plans that you have for our life. Let us leave this place knowing more about your love and grace in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Can we give God a hand of praise just before we get into the word today? And you may be seated. So we're ready for the word. Amen. A, um, we started a series last week called Raw, and, uh, and I really believe in the world that we live in, there's many things that are trying to get our attention, there's many opinions out there, but I believe it's, it's, it's so important for us as the church to continually raw the goodness of God to the world around us, because I don't know about you, but there's something very distinct about the roar of a lion. It sounds different than anything else. You imagine a little cat, a little domestic cat, how it does its little meow. You're like, it's, you know that that's a little, little cat. But when you hear the roar of a lion, you go, you know that that's a lion. And I think when it comes to us as the people of God, as we roar the truth, there's something different about what we roar. It's something that leads people to freedom and leads people to life. And, and I really believe us as the church, you go, let's never become insecure about the message of Jesus Come on, the message of Jesus is our hope, it's our confidence, it's what gives us a great future to look forward to. So we've been going on this series about raw, we started last week, we're continuing it this week, and I'm just hoping that it stirs you up to realise that we're all called to fulfil the great commission for our life. We're all called to go and make disciples of all nations, we're all called in, in, in to be able to present the truth, the, the gospel to people with our actions and with our words. And, and I believe that the world that we live in, it's not time for the church to be quiet. We're going to continually roar the truth that's going to lead people to life. And the scripture I love is in Proverbs 28, 1. And it says this, The wicked run away when no one is chasing them, but the godly are as bold as lions. I love this for two reasons is that that's the reason why I don't run, because it says the wicked run when nobody's chasing them. So it's okay not to be... A, you know, when you go to the park and you see those people running, it's because they're wicked. No one's chasing them. They're just running around. But, but it's people that... What is it? That are godly or bold as lions. We can stand with confidence, knowing who we are and what we're called to do. We can roar with confidence. And, uh, and I'm just praying as we go through this series that we would understand the importance of us opening our mouth and talking and telling people about the goodness of God. How will they know if nobody tells them? Come on, God uses us uh, um, to be able to lead people to himself. Let's make ourselves available to God and say, God, use me to be able to see your kingdom established here on earth. Use me to lead me to, to, to use me to lead people to you, Father. Because I really believe that in John 14, 6, it says that Jesus says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's the truth of the gospel, that Jesus has come. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through Jesus. That's the good news that we share. It's not about trying to get to God on our own and in our own ability or, or through any other means. But no, Jesus came so that we, through our faith, can believe in him and have right standing with God. That's the good news. He is the way, the truth, and the life. So last week when we started this series off, we spoke about that when we roar the truth, we've got to make sure it's out of a heart of love. I think the church has got it wrong sometimes when they comes to presenting the good news. They say it in a way that's so harsh that, pull, that, that turns people away. Come When we present the good news about Jesus, we've got to do it in a way that's with a heart of love, and grace, 
The reason why we're telling people about the good news is because we love them. And there's a gracious God that cares for them. And we've got to make sure that our heart reflects the heart of God, that we love them. And with grace, we tell them about the good news of God. And today we're going to speak for a few moments on this topic. We've got to speak even though it seems like people aren't listening. Because I don't know about you, but there's times in my life that I've been telling people about Jesus and it just seems like they're not listening. But you know what? We've got to be people that continually present the truth to people, continually sow seeds so that God can do what he can do. You know, um, if, if you've got children, you know what it's like to speak and not be listened to. Uh, and sometimes you've got a spouse too, but we won't talk about that. We'll just keep it about children. But I don't know about you, but sometimes my kids will come to me and they'll be like, Dad, can I go for a, a scooter ride? And I'll be like, yep, you can go for a scooter ride, but make sure you have your helmet on and your shoes on. They go off. Next minute, they come running in with a stubbed toe and it's bleeding and they're crying. And I'm like, I told you to put your shoes on and helmet on. But you see, I spoke, but they didn't listen. They just heard, yes, you can go. And they didn't hear the instructions afterwards. And, uh, and I think sometimes in our life, we can sort of get ourselves into... Um, when it comes to God, go, well, what's the point of telling people they're not going to listen anyway? But I think we've got to understand that we're not responsible for how people respond to the good news. We're responsible about um, to present the good news to those people around us. We've got to keep preaching and telling people about the good news of God. And I'm not talking about standing on the street corner, Bible bashing people. If God tells you to do that, great, go do that. But I really believe that God's called us with our, with our life and with our words to show people Jesus and show them in our lives with our actions and with our words. I believe that preaches much more than doom and gloom on a corner. But if God's called you to do that, that's great. But Ezekiel in the Bible, we're going to read Ezekiel 2. And in this scripture, it's Ezekiel's had a vision from God. And God's spoken to him to go and to tell people a message from God. And, uh, and as we read in a moment, we're going to see that. He goes, I want you to go and tell them the message, but they're not going to listen to you. But you're going to go do it anyway. But in, in Corinth, uh, sorry, not Corinth, in Ezekiel 2, even the title of this chapter, it says Ezekiel's call and commission. I think we've got to understand as believers, we've been all called and we all have a commission. Now, Jesus has told us the great commission to go out into all the world and tell people and go, go out into all the world and make disciples of all nations. Come, we're all called and we're all commissioned. But in this one here, it's when Ezekiel 2, verses 1, we'll read down to verse 8. It says this, Stand up, son of man, said the voice. I want to speak with you. The Spirit came into me as he spoke and he, sat me, and he set me on my feet. I just love that. When the... When the Spirit of God comes into us, He causes us to rise up and stand up on our feet. It says this, So I listened carefully to His word. Son of man, He said, I am sending you to the nation of Israel, a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have been rebelling against me to this very day. They are stubborn and hard-hearted people. But I am sending you to say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. And whether they listen or refuse to listen, for remember they are rebels, at least they have known um, they have had a prophet amongst them. Son of man, do not fear them or their words. Do not be afraid, even though their threats sound like um, nettles or briars or, uh, and scorp uh, stinging scorpions. Do not be dismayed by their dark scrolls, skulls, uh, even though they are rebels. You must give them my message, whether they listen or not. But they won't listen. This is a great verse. <laughs> For they are complete rebels, son of men. Listen to what I, uh, I, I say to you. Do not join them in their rebellion. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. And what a crazy vision to have. God's like, I want you to go to these rebellious, hard-hearted people, and I want you to tell them about the message I'm going to give you, but they're not going to listen to you because they're rebels. Now, I don't know about you, but as I read that, I'm like, what's the point of telling them if they're not going to listen? But we've got to understand that when it comes to roaring the truth, 
We're not responsible for how people respond. We're responsible for our obedience on presenting the good news to Jesus. I love here that it says that even though they weren't listening, he was still going to roar the truth anyway. He was still going to speak anyway. Even though it says, hey, they're not going to listen. They've been rebels for a long time. Go and tell the truth because by you telling the truth, at least they know that there was a man of God with them that was preaching. And I just want to give us a few things from this scripture today just to help us and to encourage us to keep being people that understand we're called to tell people about the good news of Jesus. You know, usually when I'm preaching, I'm preaching about what God can do in your life and, 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 and it's more of a ministry to you. But today I'm trying to stir, stir you to realize that what God has placed in you is too good to keep to yourself. You need to tell people about Jesus. We're not about just us four and no more. We're called to be the very hands and feet of Jesus, reaching out and letting people know about the good news of Christ. So the first thing I want to talk about today is this. We've got to do our part and trust God with the rest. Because even though Ezekiel knew they weren't going to listen, he decided that he was going to speak it anyway. He was going to be obedient because he could control that, but he couldn't control their response, so he trusted God to do what he was going to do. And when it comes to us, when it comes to evangelizing and telling people about the good news of Jesus, come on, let's do our part and trust God with the rest. When it comes to those people that are in our world and and who God's called us to reach, come on, let's continually present the gospel in a way wrapped in love and grace so that we can see them be able to come into relationship with God and, and live the blessed life that we all get to live out of that relationship. So do your part and trust God with the rest. Come on, he had no control over their response, but he could control his obedience. I think there's certain people and certain religions that try to control people's responses. They try to manipulate, they they use abuse and all different tactics to control people's behavior. And I believe it's completely wrong. I I love the word of God because it's all about love and grace. It's about us presenting the message and it's up to them how they're going to respond to it. It's not about us trying to control their response, but it's about us controlling our obedience and trusting God to have his way. Come, we've got to understand that God's fighting for us. Come, and the Holy Spirit is at work in people's lives. Come, it says in Scripture that eternity is in the hearts of everybody. Everybody has a longing for God, but some people use other things to fill it, which fills it for a moment, but leaves them empty. There's only one thing that can fill the God-shaped gap in people's lives, and it's God. And we've got to keep presenting the truth, being obedient to him and trusting God with the rest. Even when it feels like they aren't listening, we're just doing our part and trusting God. The second thing I want to talk about is this, is we've got to speak anyway, it's the right thing to do. Speak anyway, it's the right thing to do. People, people like to try to, to shut people down and go, well, you go preach somewhere else. And, but we've got to understand We're not there condemning and pointing the finger at people. We're there with open arms, loving and caring and telling people there's a better way that God has a plan for their life. We've got to speak anyway. It's the right thing to do. Let me give you an example of this. Like if I was to offend you, which hopefully I haven't done that, but if I was to upset you and, 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 and offend you, do something wrong by you, I can then realize, hey, I've done the wrong thing and I need to go and apologize Even though I know the apology is not going to fix all the problems, but I apologize because it's the right thing to do and it will lead hopefully on on a path of healing and being reconciled back in that relationship. I believe it's the same when it comes to us telling people about Jesus. Maybe they won't come to know Jesus right there and then, but it's up to us to speak anyway. It's the right thing to do to tell them about the good news And hopefully that's a seed that we sow that somebody else can water and eventually that they'll come to know Jesus Christ. Come on, we've got to learn to speak anyway. Look at to speak anyway. I've got a a friend, Pastor Jeff, who leads our Wollongong location. And uh, I remember one time we were in the Liverpool car park, uh, Liverpool location's car park, and there was some suspicious characters that were in that car park. And... And I thought, mate, we've got to call the police on these guys because they look like they're about to rob the place. And he goes, Jeff's had an upbringing where it was pretty rough, so he can 
connect with those people okay? And he goes, no, no, it's all right, I'll go speak to them. And he went over and spoke to them and, goes, and said, hey, you know that God's got a better way for your life? And he started preaching to them and they received what he was saying. I just thought, I was about to call the police on them because I thought they were a rough group of people, but he chose to go and speak the good news anyway and deposit something into their life. And, and to me, it made me think, stop judging books by their cover. Stop thinking that people are closed off. Come on, people have open hearts. They want to know the good news of Jesus, but we just need some people to rise up and to tell them about him. Come on, speak anyway. It's the right thing to do. We've got to do our part and trust God with the rest. And I don't know about you, but I sense in my spirit that God's wanting to do something new through his church. I don't believe that this whole season that we've gone through of coronavirus and all that was, was, was just, a, uh, just something that just happened. I believe that God has a plan through it all. And I see it's time for, for the church to realize, even though we're going to do the same things that we've done before, we'll understand why we're doing it. We'll understand why we gather together, why we encourage one another. And I'm believing through the seasons that we've been through that God's going to refine and define people to set them back on fire for the things that really matter. Because I think what we can understand is, is that this world is pretty fickle, but our God that we serve is a solid foundation and people need to continually build, his, build their life upon Him. The good news about Jesus. Too good to keep to ourselves. Now, the, the, the third thing. I want to speak about for a few moments is this, is that remember, just keep this in mind, remember the lack of response does not mean that you're failing. Because I think sometimes when it comes to us sharing our faith and telling people about Jesus, if we, if we don't get a return straight away, we think that we're failing and we're like, man, what's the point of doing this? But what I love in, in, in Luke 13 is that Jesus says a parable about the, the, the seed and the, and the different types of ground. And what he's talking about is how people receive the good news of Jesus. And he talks about um, four different responses that people have to the good news of Christ. But what I love most of all is that you know, some people received it and some people rejected it. But what the good news is about this story is that everybody had opportunity to hear it. Come on, the seed went out that was spread by the farmer. It landed on all the ground. They all heard the message, but only few received it. We've got to understand it's up to us to make sure people hear the good news. It's up to them to receive the good news so it can bring a great harvest in their life. Amen? So the, the story goes that a farmer goes out and scatters seed and it falls upon all this ground. But later on in the verse, Jesus explains what he's talking about when it comes to this parable. And that's what I want to read to us, just to bring to mind different types of ground, different times of pe diff different responses, different ways that people respond to the word of God. This is what it says in verse 1 and 9. It says, this is the meaning of the parable. Sorry, that's the wrong part. Luke 8, 11 to 15 it says this. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is God's word. You've got to understand there's nothing wrong with the seed. The seed is good. God's word is great. It's, it's, if you're, if you're the right ground, it produces great things in your life, as you will soon discover. So it says, the seed is, is God's word. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message only to have the devil come and take it away from their heart and preventing them from believing and being saved. So it's saying that there's a type of response. That's the, the path. As soon as you say it, it's like they're shut down. It's like... The devil robs that seed from them. It doesn't produce anything in their life. They don't become saved um, by receiving the, the word of God into their life. And I believe that some people, you'll see it, that they're so full of everything else that they've got no room for God. So you tell them about God and they're like, no, I'm so full of, of, of everything else. But, but what I want us to highlight as well is that when it comes to the ground of your life, it's not saying that you have to be the rock or the, uh, the path or the, the rocky ground we can all choose to be good soil. We're responsible for how we receive the word of God. Everyone can be saved. Everybody can receive Jesus. It's up to them to choose to, for, for their life to become good ground. So it's saying here that there's the footpath and it goes on uh, and says, the seed 
on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they believe for a while, then they fall away when they face temptation. So what it's saying is there's another group of people, they hear the word, it's like, yeah, I love, I love the word of God, but they never let it go down deep into their life. And what happens is temptation comes and they just, they just walk away from God because the temptation entices them and they disappear. Then it says, um, the seed that fell among the thorns represents those who hear the message, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the cares and riches and pleasures of this life. I believe that this one can hang around church for a long time. And it seems like they come in without anything and then God blesses them. And it's almost like God blesses them out of the church. It's like they come in with nothing, God blesses them, they get what they need and they walk away. When what they've got to realize is the one that blesses them is the one that can sustain them and help them to go from strength to strength. So I want to encourage you, when God starts blessing you, bringing in the things that you need, don't walk away from God and church. Stay planted because God has so much more in store for your life. Because it says that those people, they never grow into maturity. And we need to see Christians grow into maturity, not just stay immature, but to mature by following Jesus. And then it says this, Then the seed that fell on good soil represents honest, good-hearted people who hear God's word, cling to it, and it patiently produces a huge harvest. So you see that all those other grounds, it's like maybe you might have been good for a moment or they'll, they'll close off completely, but there's something about good ground, that they hear the word of God, they cling to it, and it produces a huge harvest of blessing in and out of their life. Different responses to how people receive the good news about Jesus. Can I encourage us, let's make sure we always choose to be good ground where we cling to the word of God, we hold to it, and let it produce a harvest in our life. See, just because, what this point is, just because we don't see a return straight away, it doesn't mean that we're failing. We're responsible for sowing the seed. People are responsible for the type of life that they live, the ground that they are. But it's up to us. We're successful when we sow seeds. If we reap a harvest, it's all honour to God because he's done the work in their life. All we need to do is keep sowing the seed. Make sure people hear the good news of Christ. Keep living a life that lines up with the word of God so that we can sow seeds into people so that we can see a great return in their life. Oh, they're not listening. No one's knowing. What's the point? Keep sowing seeds. Make sure they keep hearing the word of God. Because you look at Jesus' life. Many people rejected Jesus. But he kept doing what he was called to do. And he saw a harvest in, uh, reaped from, in people's lives. Come, let's realize of us too that people may reject us. People may not like the message that we preach. But hey, it's not about us. It's the message. Don't shoot the messenger. Let's keep preaching the message and keep trusting God in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. And the fourth point is this. There is no such thing as a lost cause when it comes to evangelism. There's no such thing as a lost cause when it comes to evangelism. When it comes to us preaching the good news, it's not about, oh, that was a waste. You don't understand people's lives and the, the story that they're going through or the situation that they're going through. We never quite understand people's full story. But what we've got to do is keep sowing seeds, keep watering seeds, keep doing what we can do, and I believe eventually God will have his way in people's lives. Come on, you've got to understand Jesus is going to win in people's lives. Come on, let's keep sowing seeds. Let's keep showing up. Let's keep preaching the good news because God's going to win in people's lives. It's not for us to just sit there and be quiet, but we're called to roar the truth with love and grace. And we've got to speak even when it feels like people aren't listening to us. Because as we keep doing that, as we keep being obedient to God, I believe that Jesus' kingdom will become established in Wagga as it is in heaven, in Australia, in this state, everywhere. But we're going to keep presenting the good news. I want to finish with this story, and it's in Acts 7, 54 and 58. It's a story about Stephen. Now, Stephen was a person that was serving the body of Christ. He was waiting on tables. He was serving people in practical ways. And, 
and suddenly opposition come up against him and they started accusing him of, of blasphemy and all these types of things. And he stood up and he preached the truth to these uh, religious leaders. And they didn't like hearing the truth. Listen to what it says here. It says, The Jewish leaders were infuriated by Stephen's accusations, and they shook their fists at him in rage. But it says this, But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed steadily into heaven and saw the glory of God, and he saw Jesus standing in the place of honour at God's right hand. He told them, Look, I see heaven open, and the Son of Man standing in the place of honour, at his right hand. Then they put their hands over their ears and began shouting. They rushed at him and dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. His accusers took off their coats and laid them at the feet of a young man named Saul. I love the power of this story and the truth that it preaches to us. There's never, because you got to understand that he's preaching the truth to these group of people who didn't like it, they got angry about it. But he says that he looked up to heaven and he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. You've got to understand, when you look through Scripture, it always says that Jesus has been seated at the right hand of the Father. But here we see a person standing up and roaring the truth to a group of people and Jesus is standing. What, What I get from this is that as we stand for God, as we roar the truth, Jesus stands for us. All of heaven is roaring for us as we stand up and speak the truth with love and grace. He stands for us. And that's what we've got to understand, that our words aren't just words that fall to the ground. When we speak the Word of God, it always accomplishes what it's set out to do. We're speaking with all of heaven as we speak the Word of God over people's lives. So Jesus was standing, but it says they took Him out and they stoned Him. Big rocks, throwing it on Him, breaking His bones which eventually took his life. But the powerful thing is, is that he spoke the message, the truth to the religious leaders. But what does it say that when they took off their coats, they put their coats at the feet of a young man by the name of Saul. He was sowing seeds to the leaders, but he was also sowing seeds into a young man's life. That as we kept reading in Acts, we read that Saul had an encounter with Jesus. His life was turned around and his name was now called Paul who saw the church explode, the New Testament church explode that wrote, that wrote most of the New Testament for us to be able to understand the grace of God and how we can live our life. Because somebody, someone that was just waiting on tables spoke the truth spoke the Word of God, a seed was sown into a young person that we get to live in in the blessing today because he stood up and he roared the truth even when he knew his life was going to be taken from doing it. Come on, how important it is this message that we have, the message of Jesus, which is the power of salvation. Come on, this message that we hold, it's too good to keep to ourselves. Even though people might not receive it, we're going to speak it anyway. We never know who's listening and what God can do when that seed falls on somebody's life. Speak, even when it feels like people aren't listening. Let me just recap quickly what we spoke about. We've got to do our part and trust God with the rest. Speak anyway, it's the right thing to do. Remember, a lack of response doesn't mean that you're failing. And there is no such thing as a lost cause when it comes to evangelism. But how good is the God that we serve? How grateful are we that we have that that seed, the good news, Jesus in our life and how it's producing a great harvest in our life. I don't know about you, but I'm grateful for it. And it's too good to keep to ourselves. Let's continue to roar the truth that leads people to Jesus, leads them to freedom. It's not about stressing and straining. I don't know how to do it. It's about just telling people about about what God has done in your life. You don't have to overcomplicate it. You don't have to know it all. You don't have to even know all the books of the Bible in order. It'd be good if you knew that. But it's about what God has done in your life and the journey that you're going on. Telling people about that and watching what God does as you share your story. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen, amen. Can we all just close our eyes and bow our heads for a few moments? You know, I want to give people an opportunity here today that maybe you don't have a relationship with Jesus. Maybe you haven't received that Word of God. You have an opportunity today to receive Jesus as your Lord and Saviour. You have an opportunity for that God-shaped gap to be filled in your life. You have an opportunity to receive forgiveness of sins. You don't have to live by guilt and shame anymore. You don't have to live as a slave to your emotions. But you can live as a child of God. You can live in the freedom that He has for you. He's just one prayer away. It says in Romans that we're saved by the confession of our mouth, that we, believe, that we confess that Jesus is Lord and we believe that he, that he rose again in our hearts. And so I want to lead us in a prayer today that of inviting Jesus into your life. Maybe you've never said this prayer. It would be a great honor to be able to lead you in this prayer. Maybe you once said this prayer, but you've walked away. Maybe the thorns, the, 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 the riches, the, the blessings have choked out the Word of God in your life. And how good would it be today to say, hey, I'm choosing to be good ground. I'm choosing to hear the Word of God, to cling to the Word of God until it produces a great harvest in my life. Not giving up. So if that's you here today, you want to give your life to Jesus for the first time or coming back, I'm going to count to three. If you want to be included in this prayer, I just want you just to raise your hand. You ready? One, two, three. If that's you all over this place, I want to get your life right with Jesus for the first time or coming back. Lift it up high. That's great. That's great. People coming to know Jesus. Amen. Come on, can we all say this prayer together? If you, if you raised your hand or if you didn't, I want to encourage you just to say this prayer with me. And church, let's say it together. It goes like this. Dear God, thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for me. I believe that he rose again. I confess that I'm a sinner and I repent of that. Jesus, come into my life. Wash me clean. Be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Come, let's rejoice of all of heaven. Amen. Now, what, what I want us to do before we move on in this service is that I want us to take a moment just to pray for those people in our worlds that are away from Jesus. It could be a, a family member. It could be a work colleague. It could be whoever, an enemy. And we're going to pray right now and believe together that we're going to keep doing what we can do and trust God with the rest. We're going to keep sowing seeds, keep watering seeds, keep bringing people to that place of decision until we see them become good ground which is they cling to the Word of God and it produces a harvest in their lives. Come on, let's have those people in our minds right now. Let's pray together. God, let's pray for those people in our worlds that are away from You. God, we know in Your Word it says that it's Your will for none to perish, but for all to come into relationship with You. God, we thank You that we have salvation through nothing else but Jesus, through our faith in Him. And God, we just uh, pray for opportunities that we can continue to sow seeds, water seeds, or, or reap the harvest. God, we just say that anything the enemy's trying to do to kill, steal, and destroy, we come against that. In the name of Jesus, we speak life. We speak salvation. God, we pray that salvation hit households. And God, we want to give you the, the glory and honor. We're going to thank you in advance, God, for the people that are going to come to know you in Jesus' mighty name. And if, if you believe it, give a big amen and give him a hand of praise. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.